being reported within the building. Please wait for further announcements. Attention please. Attention please. An incident has been reported within the building. Please wait for further announcements. Attention please. <laughs> Attention please. The fire alarm test is now complete. And no faults have been reported. Thank you for your cooperation. Marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> So, so just to say really, of the sort of 580 meetings that we've got to deliver, we're already, you know, we've already delivered half of those, so we're above target on, on that particular uh, uh, deliverable. And should anybody here or any of the agencies that you're working with or any of the community want some support and advice, obviously, you know, get in touch with the adventure club, we've got our website. So skill shows, um, as part of this contract, we've got to deliver 10 skill shows, uh, tw 20 skill shows, <laughs> 18 smaller ones and two um, uh, large skill shows. So we've already delivered one large skill show. We, the the Apprentice Club sponsored the Big Bang, which happened in June this year. Um, some of the images again there of some of the events that uh, have taken place. And one of those skill shows have happened again in terms of like, the across the city region. Um, our biggest skill show will be next year, and it'll be similar to the one that happened in Aintree a few years ago. Um, it'll be down at the Echo Arena, um, and that will be in uh, June next year as part of the International Business Festival. Um, we, we've got a whole range of other events and skill shows that are taking place. I've got the big long list here. Uh, so again, we're overperforming in those. Some of those skill shows may be um, just, you know, happening in one particular borough, some of them are city region wide. Uh, we've got a health uh, event coming up in November, a health skill show. Um, we've, we've, uh, we've got construction events coming up. There's been a whole raft of different skill shows. And the idea behind skill shows is that um, it's an opportunity for young people and adults uh, to have a go at some of these you know, particular sectors, some of these particular roles, and for businesses to be there to inform it's very much around what you know. Some of the messages that Mark was talking about before, in terms of raising awareness of what what is happening in the city region and what where the apprentices can fit into that really. So again, just a few images of some of the uh, uh, skill shows that have happened to date. Uh, just move, moving on to labour market information. This was something that uh, you were uh, quite keen to see uh, reflected in the report. Uh, through the funding that's come in, the general reference that we will be able to update our skills for growth <coughs> agreement. So that's a, an example of the financial and professional services one on, on the left there. Uh, and these set out um, the skills needs of businesses uh, at the moment and the future, reflecting some of the engagement that Mark's talked about through the left already. Looking at what's provided at the, at the moment, we then see where the gaps are and where that focus action needs to be. So that's very much of an employer. And, 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 and at an advice uh, level. What we're also really keen to do is to get some practical materials developed that can be used um, whether by young people or by adults, by parents, by wider communities, by influencers. So you know, here, here are some of the jobs that if you want to do you know, X job, then you know, here's how you can find out. I think part of the issue is you know, that perhaps 20, 30 years ago, you know, there weren't quite as many jobs available um, around. Uh, and the pathways to achieve those are more straightforward and you know, there were definite career ladders in place. I heard somebody describe it as a career, it's more like a career climbing frame these days. Uh, and you've, you need to help to be seen uh, to, to see where to go to next. Well, I've just got an example there, forgive me, it's, um, I will email with these slides. This is from the NHS career uh, pathway, and, which is a very, very detailed uh, guides and those are just four areas around ambulance service, allied health professionals, dental care professionals and healthcare science around the, the career climbing frame that they've got in the NHS these days. What we need to be able to do is to have um, uh, that available in, in all sectors, in all roles. Uh, we've talked about in, 
you know, automation, digitization already, clearly uh, enabling young people, adults, teachers, parents, communities to understand what some of those jobs are now in the future is absolutely fundamental so we make sure that uh, people have the skills that they need. We reference the national campaign. Um, this is the latest version of the national campaign uh, that was launched recently. Uh, it was a sounding hours at a national uh, uh, event a few weeks ago and the person who was responsible for this said, uh, there's this national campaign. And we all looked around the room and said, well, none of us have ever heard of it. Um, so um, in telling you, you're one of the first people to know about this, uh, it would appear. So Amazing Apprenticeships is a national campaign which is trying to promote apprenticeships nationally and give uh, an overview in terms of what some of those apprenticeships are to inspire uh, young people, to inspire parents, and also to provoke employers to say, here's some different things uh, that you can do. So as well as having the local activities that Siobhan's talked about, there is a national campaign with very much seeing what we're doing as part of an overall national campaign. Uh, we touched on data. This is the latest version of our data dashboard. Uh, so based on some early stats that came out the week before last. So across the city region, we've had a slight increase in the number of starts. You can see there's been quite a fall nationally in the number of starts in 2016-17. I should say that's the academic year, not the financial year. The age profile, um, I think, gives us uh, some calls for concern. 18 to, 16 to 18 year olds, there's been a marked drop off there in terms of the number of uh, new people who are starting apprenticeships, and perhaps our, our fall appears more severe uh, than nationally. Um, and there has been an increase in the in 25 plus uh, starts. That seems to put the, the, the narrative that employers, where they have an apprenticeship levy, are using the funding to uh, to create apprenticeships for their existing staff to train them and to develop them rather than seeing them as an opportunity <coughs> to grow their workforce. Uh, that would seem to be the early narrative, but this is only a few months into the apprenticeship levy having been in place, so it's a, uh, it's a, we just need to keep our eye on that one. But in terms of curriculum areas, uh, some positives uh, that we can see there, engineering and manufacturing technology, booking the trend nationally, um, same with uh, health, booking services and care. Constru construction down slightly, that's been a bit up and down in, re in previous years, and we're starting some work to understand why uh, that is. Business admin and law within the city region is higher than nationally as well, and that may well be because apprenticeship um, employers are doing more uh, management and leadership style apprenticeships with their existing staff than necessarily using it for new but that's, um, we need to wait for the next set of data for us to be able to, uh, to draw down to the detail of that. But that's just a, an overview of, of where we think at the moment. In terms of the Skills for Growth service, this is an impartial brokerage service that we've got within the city region that works alongside the apprenticeship hub. And as well as those uh, outreach events that Siobhan's mentioned, the skills brokers have worked and have uh, provided advice and guidance to 337 uh, employers on apprenticeships. Uh, a range of different employers, uh, micro businesses, SMEs, large businesses from across the city region and from across uh, sectors. So uh, that's really positive. So there's a reinforcement of the messages uh, from every opportunity uh, as they come forward. Uh, just before I just touch on our ambassadors, really just to you know, in terms of what Rob was talking around, 16 to 18 year olds, and that, that seemed to be a drop in that. I mean, one of the things we're focusing on from the hub point of view in the next, well, in this quarter, um, is around school engagement. What we tend to find is that when we go into schools, or when schools invite us in, which is great, <coughs> that schools are now opening the doors to the, the idea behind apprenticeships, but we, we tend to go in, and there's a set of pupils sat on this side, who are your kind of your more traditional, going to university uh, youngsters and then on the other side are the ones that wouldn't necessarily go to university and the schools are making that choice before those individuals so they say no oh, right these these are the uh, young people we want you to go in and talk to about apprenticeships but you know leave these alone and so when we're going and we say well no it's, it's about that impartial independent uh, choice of that young person so 
we're asking can we speak to all young people in that particular year group and not just those who would be deemed not to go to university and that's actually been really well received so one of the things we've kind of taken that a little step further in that we, we've we wanted to think about a more innovative way to go into schools and talk about apprenticeships so we've got some educational uh, theatre performances that we're currently working on i was looking at the, the, the final script of that yesterday i'm really excited can't wait to go out into schools so we've got funding to go into 30 schools across the city region, but we hope that we can actually go into more schools because we can, you know, the, the funding is a bit flexible, which will allow us to do that. And hopefully that will, you know, kind of give that impartial um, view of what an apprenticeship route might look like. And you know, I'm perfectly timed into uh, the slide here. Uh, our ambassadors, we've got about 25 ambassadors so these are young people who are apprentices or have been apprentices working in businesses across the Liverpool City region who basically are ambassadors. They'll, they'll come to uh, events with us at schools or they'll come and talk to employers. They've, they've done presentations for the lab before, for Mark. Um, and they tell people about their journey, what, it's, what it was like, how they thought about becoming an apprentice, the kind of uh, information, advice and guidance they got or didn't. Um, what, what their training's been like and, and where they are now. Um, and, you know, they're, they're an amazing bunch. They meet, um, you know, we meet formally as an apprenticeship ambassador group. Uh, and that's, that's kind of like the, the bottom centre picture uh, is the last meeting that we had with them um, last month. Um, and, and they've been down to the Houses of Parliament, they've met the Skills Minister. They're very vocal and they're, they're probably the best um, Salespeople, in terms of talking about apprenticeships and the value of them uh, within the local city region and, and nationally, of course. So we just wanted to kind of end on that. That you know, these are whilst these young people are in paid employment, some of them are on kind of low um, low pay, and they're doing this job for on behalf of like the combined authority. You know, in their own time, in many cases. So it was just really to say, you know, they're they're a breath of fresh air. They really are kind of champions and. Um, Thanks for your uh, thanks for listening. Two, 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 two points to finish up on that, There are a series of employer ambassadors as well um, who uh, are supporting the engagement. The mayor spoke to the Northwest Network of those uh, last week uh, as we hosted them uh, here. Just wanted to set out the next, uh, next steps. Those who are in, that's um, section <coughs> two to the report, page eight, to continue what we're doing. And I think one of the key things here as well is around that continued lobbying and the continued engagement with governments about actually how we get them to use the apprenticeship levy um, because uh, you know, it looks like there are significant issues with that that we need to look at actually on some better way, you know, there are some better ways that we can uh, use that money if it's available locally to us. Um, so we'd like to commend the recommendations to you in section two of the report that you uh, note the progress against your panel, panel recommendations uh, you consider options about how often you want us to come back to you with this, and you endorse the plan to support further development of the national Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Mr. Uh, are there any questions?
still shows are an ideal opportunity. We've got a lot of employers there that we're working with, and, and you know that, that is key for us, really. You know, I just break into this. I'm conscious that uh, my brother is uh, on the business all today, and uh, he's, he's got to leave at uh, half past eleven. So, can I ask you to stay? I mean, we'll come back to you after after the merge. Good morning. Um, yes, unfortunately, I have got to leave, but given that time short, if we could squeeze that to 11.35, hopefully to give some members the opportunity to ask any questions. But I, I have got to go, and it, it is something that links in to what's just been spoken about, because I'm going to... Um, a training and education uh, training awards ceremony uh, just over the road, but I've got to go back and then get there. So I'll go to do that. Um, but I thought it was really important because the first time uh, we had this, uh, I did come and say, whenever you wanted, invite me back and I'll tell you where we are and what the progress is. And there's been <coughs> substantial progress since uh, even since the last time we spoke. Um, again, this links into an event that I've had on this morning, which was a breakfast meeting, 200 businesses. Not bad, as you think about that, on a uh, what day we on? Wednesday. Um, I've just come back from a, another thing I'll, I'll touch on. I've just been to, um, to Paris for a, a mayoral gathering. Uh, we, we have to understand just how good our city brand image is in an international context. But, Businesses, the 200 plus businesses who've just attended this breakfast meeting now. It was myself and the mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burnham, talking about how we need to work more collaboratively and trying to tease out some of the complementarity between what Manchester City Region is doing, what we're doing. But at times, there's going to be competition between us, we know that. But the most important part of that is getting people on an international scale to start to consider the northwest then we'll battle then between which is the best strategic fit but we are selling on a, a, a global scale now our, our brand and, and i have to say and i've said it today we're ahead of manchester than this because our brand is a better known international brand than manchester is because we've obviously uh, not just had football teams like this <coughs> not just had four lads that shook the world like they've got a music heritage Think about as a port city, the, the history of good and bad that's happened from our shores. So, um, the 100 day plan, uh, and I'll, ask, I'll answer any questions that you, you've got to ask on this. Uh, if I split it up, you might remember that in the manifesto I had five main headings, and that's how we really started to, to pull out the information into the, uh, the 100 day plan. So, they are ambitious, fair, green, connected, and together. So if we go through them, yeah, in regard to uh, ambitious, really this, this is about raising aspiration for our city region and for every single person in it and for every business in that. So we've set up a skills commission and it's got a private sector chair, who's Mike Hume, who's the manager director of Alston. Um, again, you might know that Alston, we as a combined authority, gave them five million pounds to set up at Halton very successful business already, looking at what the expansion opportunities are. But that has resulted in, and I'm, I'm, I'm very careful to choose my words here, because there hopefully will be announcements in the future, but for other manufacturers uh, of um, rail to look at our city region afresh. It tries, isn't it? We were the, the birthplace of the rail system. You know, the, the rail trials is in our city region. So, Right, if we can attract rail manufacturers back to our city region, what abuse that will be, not just in jobs, but in, again, our world standard. Um, we've also got Ian Kazza, Ian Mayer, who's the leader of Sefton on, on that, and we, we should literally point out that Ian has, for a long time, led on the skills agenda and is doing some really, really good stuff. So, uh, just to, to perhaps note in the minutes, the, our, our, our thanks to, to Council Mayor for everything that he's been doing. And they've already had two very productive meetings. On the fairness uh, agenda, I, I said I was going to set up this thing, the Fairness and Social Justice Advisory Board. 
not to be confused with what's happened in other areas of the country, including in Islington and in Liverpool, very, very different. And this is a body that doesn't just look at uh, issues, but has some responsibility for developing policy in its own right, but then to scrutinise, not in this way, not, not the scrutiny function, but to scrutinise uh, whether we fulfil some of the requirements of fairness and social justice in the policies that we want to push forward and implement. So Lynn Collins, uh, I'm sure is familiar to everybody here, but she, uh, she's from the North West TUC, but she's been uh, appointed as the chair and we've put out an advert to everybody in your networks, hopefully we'll have all got this, for them to put forward people that they believe are of the right calibre and the type of people who would have been on this and unfortunately it's one of those sad things sometimes when I'm sitting in that chair, chair uh, you have to announce the death of, of, of certain people and Sabert Massey died recently and Sabert is one of the architects of the Fairness and Social Justice Advisory Board and would become one of its members so a great and really sad loss to us but his legacy will be in how we implement this it's about social inclusion right the way across the six districts and through every cross-cutting theme that we have in policy development connected uh, we have a digital summit um, which is absolutely fantastic it's mainly uh, uh, organized through the left book as you know the left are now working on the 12th floor in this building and the left and the combined authority are very much collaborating on big ticket issues so uh, we uh, both had input into this but you know again uh, give credit to where it's due john whaling and others from the left deserve special mention but during it I took, uh, this is really difficult for anyone to, to describe. So I took place in a, a transatlantic meeting in virtual reality. So I had an avatar made of me, and there was a guy who's a NASA scientist in Palo Alto in Silicon Valley, and we didn't talk to each other. We, we met in this dimension. Um, it's very strange, but we put this thing on, and after about two or three minutes of talking to the person, you're in the same, you immerse yourself so you're in the same space and you, you actually have a conversation, but you're not there. Well, anyway, we did it. We did it. It was fantastically successful. What we're trying to do is to showcase, again, Liverpool City Region is leading in digital technology. This is the first bit of type. It's a company called V Time. It's over in the Baltic Triangle. I'm sure if anybody wants to go and, and try this thing, uh, your minds will be blown the same as mine. But the, you know, the Americans are trying to buy this out. We can develop this in our city region. And some of the announcements that I'll be making in the next few weeks and months are about connectivity in its most strategic form. If we get this right, this is our railways, this is us doing something you know, in, in our time that will last for not just a few years, <coughs> probably for generations and way, way beyond that. And we're at the forefront of that. We're pioneering in the local city region once again. One of the other headlines in the, the, uh, the, the plan is together and on Saturday, yeah? On Saturday, uh, we had a conference uh, downstairs, really well attended, and it was violence against women, women and girls. It was a summit that we jointly hosted with um, Tabitha Morton, and Tabitha Morton stood against me as the uh, the general elections. And it was important that we reach out beyond even the three or four parties that we have represented throughout the city region. You know, they have no representation. But you have to be honest sometimes, there was a lot of good things that they were doing that really started to push the agenda forward and we need to be looking at what we can do as a command authority and certainly I as the Metro Mayor to ensure that we again lead uh, where we need to uh, along with the, the Police and Crime Commissioner Jay Kennedy to start to pull us together and we hopefully will have the first uh, sorry, um, Metro area uh, strategic overview that can really start to, to 
look at how we tackle this as, as an issue. On the medical advisors, again, uh, I said I was going to put medical advisors. We did appoint seven, six of whom are women, absolutely uh, experts in their individual fields, being um, couched in by some people as uh, a sob to uh, tokenism. You try telling Janet Beer, uh, uh, Janet Beer is uh, Professor Janet Beer, who's from the University, who's the UK president of the universities. You try telling her that she's agreed, she's been kidded to come onto this thing uh, because it's a tokenistic gesture. Um, a good look at that conversation that we have with her. These are people who are experts in their field and have a little pill city region footprint and beyond. We also have got somebody who's looking at the visitor economy, um, Sir Wild McEwen. Social housing is a big one, uh, which is Bob Spicer, who heads up the uh, Housing Associations um, Forum. Homelessness, uh, Kate Fowler, who's crisis, who did the, uh, the housing first approach, a piece of work for the Liverpool City Media Footprint that other people paid for with a whole host of money and we were gifted it, so she's doing that. We've got Luciana Berger doing mental health. Uh, we've got the natural environment, which is uh, Gideon Benton, which some, some of you might uh, remember, but he's uh, in Nature to get Together, connected, nature, to, nature Connected, and then there's the voluntary community sector. So, um, a whole host of people who can broaden the understanding uh, and the expertise of which we can call on all use these, these are resources for everybody. On community engages, engagements, I said that I'd be open and accessible as a metro mayor, and I've already been out uh, at least one day, uh, on certain occasions, two days, to each of the six boroughs uh, that's been, uh, been organised by uh, the, the local authorities, and I've gone out and looked at community engagement, but a whole host of different things, including some of the strategic planning issues that we have in each of the six boroughs. And I'm going to continue that. Uh, we're going to hopefully get uh, two boroughs per month so that we can really get out and start to understand the individual needs. And then uh, on green, the big one is, and, and you'll know this, and I think I said it before, but since I was you know, that big, the total harness and the power of the River Mersey, we've set up a special purpose vehicle, and that is collecting uh, intellectual property, but also the value of what we need, and that will provide us with clean, green, renewable energy. But more importantly, for investors, it's predictable. And again, in this Paris uh, conference that we're being to, <clears throat> the amount of people who are knocking down our door, saying that they have uh, potential investment pots of money, sovereign wealth funds, interested in coming to the, the city region, and I'm open to announce chair of the commission which will be set up to take that piece of work forward uh, on the 14th of November I'm going to be making a six month if you like a keynote speech about what we said we were going to do where we are but more importantly where we're going and I'll leave it at that chair and I'll answer any questions that anyone's got. Thank you. Uh, any questions from our Thank you. 
good fan. We've got our uh, sorry, we, we, we can. Um, we've got our own website, which at a future date we're um, more than happy to to show what its uh, functions are. But it needs to be <coughs> updated, given the huge advances that I've spoken about before. Uh, the, the way now social media is, for instance, is transformed communications. The fact that if you have a look at what all the leaders are doing, political leaders in the country, it's more video type um, uh, content rather than the written word. So we need to be transforming the platform so that we put more video content on it. And it just needs a bit of work to, to make it the most accessible and the most update, dated. Um, website that you can have. In other words, that people feel if they want to understand something, uh, an issue or, or the search for some information, that's the first point of call. The big one is, or as uh, I'm faced with this, there's absolute confusion out there because you've got uh, a mayor and Liverpool's got a world mayor and Liverpool's got a city mayor and then we've got, uh, all the districts have got either parish mayors or, or myself as the metro mayor. We expect people to understand that. One of the ways I think we can uh, demystify the political system is through that sort of uh, social media communications. And we've uh, recently took somebody on in the last two weeks whose responsibility is uh, for that. And I think she's doing a, a really good job at the moment. And we're going to expand that so that it does become much more interactive. Any other questions? In that case, can we endorse uh, the other uh, report? That'd be great. Thanks, yeah. Right, if we move back to <coughs> Siobhan and Rob now. Uh, Tony, you got a question, please. Right, yeah, thanks, Sid. Just in terms of the, um, the, the apprenticeships, etc., one of the key things I have worked on in the past, in uh, my own work, etc., is working with young people who rely on education and problems and training. So I'm just wondering, in terms of the work that has come up, in terms of developing the apprenticeship schemes, engaging with communities, engaging with schools, etc. What we're actually doing to actually engage with the young people, the very most of the young people is they may be supported about uh, education, employment, etc. And the apprenticeships is a key way in of accessing that and, and motivating young people to get involved. So anything going on now, where can we bring young people? I think there's, there's an awful lot that takes place at a very detailed level. There's the specific engagement and mentoring support that uh, young people uh, would receive. Uh, I think there's, there's a couple of issues. I think one of which is to make sure that young people get the right advice, they get into the right support and provision. I think where we are at the moment is that there's a lot of provision out there, uh, including some of the European funded activities, but perhaps young people aren't getting to the right areas, so into the right to make sure uh, that that's the case. I think there's something about making sure that there are <coughs> the right sort of provision as well as with the right provider um, and you know, whether you know, there's a, that your people need to be supported into you know, a traineeship first or into some FE <coughs> before they're then ready to take on an apprenticeship, recognising that a number of the unique young people that you mentioned, Kasper Brennan, have some particular issues that need to be addressed out with there you know, uh, before the, 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 the then in the place before the, to be able to do that. So that's absolutely fundamental. I think there's a there's a third point which uh, the committee looked at in terms of the actions, which is around how apprenticeship providers and employers can support uh, young people to come in into work. Um, I, I know you can go back to you know, Seneca. Um, and back to the days of the Roman Empire, but the but the young people change on you know, on a generational basis, uh, and perhaps what we're starting to see now uh, is uh, you know, with uh, Generation Y and millennials coming through is different expectations of young people as they come into the workforce compared to those of five, ten, fifteen, twenty years ago. So I think there's also a job of work about how we can support people who are providing support to young people and also employers to be able to better uh, enable them to do that. The Greater Merseyside Learning Provider Federation um, has a number of 
receptive base of organs, which draws that together. I think that's a critically important role for them in um, capturing and promoting that best practice amongst those people who are providing encryption training. So that, so that when you people are there, that we can support them to stay there. One of the things that the panel was really keen on last year was not just starting looking at starts, but looking on completions. So making sure that if you people are starting apprenticeships, then they complete their apprenticeship and there's some continued best practice sharing and learning that takes place on that. Thank you, Chair. Two questions. A very easy one to start with, just regards to the skill shows. Are those events open to the general public normally, or are they specifically planned by the school district? Yeah, skill shows, I mean, we're, obviously the funding kind of drives who our target audience is, but the skill shows, we wouldn't have to turn anybody away. I'm just thinking if, if you make sure that elected members are aware of when they are, where they are, because obviously we can promote them in, in yeah, meetings we'll and stuff. Yeah, we'll make sure we send out as well as actual elected members as well as councils councils and offices, thank you. And I'm afraid the second question is a bit more difficult. Um, and you did um, talk about it in the presentation there of, around regarding the on-spent levy. On the third page of your report, which is page nine of the papers, um, with regard to the future activity, item C um, refers there to advice and support for the large levy paying public sector employers, and item F um, about negotiating with government over deployment of unspent levy. Are those two things essentially the same as the unspent levy from the large employers public sector, essentially? And presumably, if so, it's not really just a question of advice and support. Obviously, advice and support is always welcome, isn't it? But the simple fact that there is no money for recruitment, and therefore you're not going to get the younger people taking on senior apprentices, and if people have to spend the levy, they're just going to use it on existing staff because they simply can't afford to recruit in any part of the uh, public sector, but certainly in local authorities, we would all vouch for the fact we've got no money. Good to learn from Mark in terms of being careful about my answer <laughs> to, to, that, to that question. I think they're, they're two different, um, uh, that you, you're right to draw out that they are linked. I think there's some questions about how can we help um, larger the uh, uh, central organisations to use uh, the levy as part of public service reform and you know, contribute towards the skills that are needed in the future. I think that's where we're seen is there some joint work, is there some joint work between health and social care, for example, around team leaders and uh, leadership that we can do that would benefit both organisations, uh, would both benefit individuals and would benefit services in the future. So I think that's one thing that we want to do. I think the other dimension about the um, use it, uh, continued discussion with government over unspent levy uh, is you know, there's a significant amount of levy that's within the private sector that are um, employers locally that, um, you know, should want to mention the loss of the same, we won't be able to spend that, or we might be able to spend years one to three, but we won't be able to do 